would share with you a woodworking project. It's a DIY for an oversized serving tray, which I needed for my patio. And I wanted something that was strong, large, and functional, but also beautiful. So I'm going to be decorating this tray with some paper cutouts that I'm going to show you. But before we do that, let me show you some of the materials we're going to need. So we've got our material. We're going to need a square. We're going to need a miter saw, some wood glue, a measuring tape, some, uh, they're actually panel nails, a hammer, our saw, some tape, some wood filler, and a pen. And we've got our panel, which is 48 by 24, and we're going to make three trays at 16 by 24 each. Additionally, we're going to be needing some sandpaper and a hand sander if you have it, some drill bits, and I've got two sizes, one the size of the screw uh, width, and one the size of the head to countersink it. We've got some decorative poles or decorative handles, some decorative corners. We have a little sponge brush, a uh, paint can opener. We've got some rollers. I'm going to be using exterior paint, so I bought a sample size. There's still paint left over, and that was more than enough. And then we need to clear coat it with either uh, a this is a three times varathane. This is a water-based clear coat. In order to protect it from the elements, we're also going to need a screwdriver and a couple of pieces of wood to practice on um, in order to um, add our handles, and I'll show you that later, and to protect our surface, and of course, a drill. So we're gonna take our measurement, and I've just eyeballed about 16 inches and added my painter's tape because this is going to help our wood when we cut it from fraying. So now I'm just going to measure here 16. Make a mark here. Turn our tray or our square. Measure here. And now we're just going to join the lines. So now we've added our piece of painter's tape and we've made our line. So we've got two 16 inch pieces. I'm going to use this to secure the wood. And I am just going to slowly So now we've got our cut edge and the tape has definitely helped to salvage this edge making it So now we've got our four pieces our two sides We'll line those up and the two middle pieces. So now we're going to glue these in place and then we've got our four pieces and we just want to put it on a level table and we want to make sure our pieces are all lined up. And we're going to add glue all the way around and then we're going to take our base, we're going to square it and then we are going to use our panel nails. You have a small head and we're going to add them all the way around the tray. Just add a bit of wood filler. So now we've added our wood filler and it's all nice and dry, and then we can just give it a kiss. Pass to make it super smooth. And don't forget to smooth our And just a few passes on the edges just to smooth up all the And 
and this dries perfectly because I've sat it on two two by fours so it's off my surface and if I need to touch something up I can certainly do it easily. Our tray is nice and dry. And I've still got about a quarter a quarter of um, this little pint left. So we have our tray and we've just added a piece of tape, lined it up here. Take our measuring tape, it's exactly 16, and then we're gonna mark the center on eight and just mark it on the tape. So now we've got our second piece of tape on some non-sticky paper. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black permanent marker and I'm just going to color holes. And you have to work a little bit fast because the ink dries quickly. And then you're just going to, I'm going to line up the edge of my handle with the edge of the tape and then just press down and there I've got two uh, very faint but you can see the two little centers and I'm just going to color them in like this now I'm going to take those two dots and I'm going to line them up as carefully as I can. I'm lining up the tape, I'm lining up the dots, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to press this and that will mark my center. So now I've got my center and I've got the two holes and I will gently pull this off and you don't want to pull the tape um, so that you stretch it. You just want to try and peel it off um, as easily as you can. This is picking up a little bit of the paper because I've done this a couple of times. And then you're going to take your piece of tape and line up that center and the edge Oops. so I've lined up the center and I've lined up the edge and now I've got my template I can use my drill and I'm using a 532, my drill bit. And I'm going to want to sit this on something that um, is going to support it so that I don't drill all the way into my counter. And as you can see, the drill bit just goes to the bottom of this and I've already done a pre-test and here is my handle and this was actually my test piece that I started off with and uh, I just took a little extra piece of wood because I wanted to test and see how evenly this would line up and um, it lined up perfectly so it also gave me an opportunity to practice drilling straight through. So give yourself a couple of extra, you're gonna have some spare wood. Just practice on it so you get all the right measurements and you know exactly. So you wanna be able to drill, but you want to keep this as level uh, or as vertical as you possibly can. You don't want to do this because then your hole will not be straight and you won't be able to get those machine screws in. So hold your drill 
and it's actually easier if you stand away a little bit and make sure it's very straight, slowly. Keep it as straight as you can, vertically. There's one hole. And it's just missed the bottom. So I'm going to have to drill a little tiny bit more, actually. My bet needs to be longer. There, that's much better. There we go. And now the second one, make sure it's centered right in the middle of that hole or the dot that you've made. Look at it, take a look back, make sure it's perfectly vertical, and then slowly keeping that as vertical as you can. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Add a little piece of tape. We've measured the middle, which is eight in my case. I've got the old template. I line it up. I make sure that I have a little piece of wood underneath. So I know when I'm going through, my drill is longer. I make sure it's perfectly vertical, as straight as I can be. Again, it's easier if you stand back a little bit to make sure that it's perfectly vertical. Keeping a steady hand. We are removing our so we want to finish off the back. And then we just want to do it gently and slowly. going down maybe an eighth of an inch, a couple of fingers. Now it spins a little bit because we are going through the quarter inch board so it'll spin a little bit and as soon as it catches you know you're into that uh, two by one which is the part of the our trim around the sides. And then we're just going to take our screws. And that's a little tight, but I think it's okay. And we're gonna try and pull that in once we add our handle. And you want to get these uh, machine screws and just ask your local hardware that you're looking for the size that um, I believe this is standard to all pulls and handles for cabinets. Put those two through. We have to do, let's see if this lines up and I believe it does. perfectly lined up and really this is one of the hardest parts of the project if you're going to try and use these um, handles that um, are sitting on the top so I'll also show you how to add handles a much easier way from the inside 
of the trim. Yeah, we can just hand tighten our screws. As I tighten it, it pulls that handle right into the screw. And because we've made the holes, um, we've counter sunk the holes a tiny bit, it lies perfectly flat. Now I could touch that up with a bit of white just to finish it off. And we have our handle. And this is very, very strong. So you will not have to worry about lifting uh, and being able to support your drinks before going outside. So now we have our tray is painted. We have our handles on. We're actually going to remove the handles so that I can work on this project and I can clear coat the entire thing and then I'll add the handles back on. It just makes it easier to clear coat it when you're turning it around, etc. So I'm just leaving these on for now just to show you some of the decorations. And what I've done is I've just basically pulled off free clip art that I found on the internet and I did a search under vintage botanical free printable clip art um, so that you don't have anything in the background and I came up with some fun designs so moths dragonflies an unusual flower little butterflies and you can let your imagination run wild. And what you're going to do is when you print out your design, you're going to want to, or at least in my case, I found that it, uh, when we printed it out, it did look a little bit uh, fuzzy. And I just wanted to highlight some of the detail in my uh, picture. So all I did was use a Sharpie and this is a um, a permanent Sharpie and I just went over the design and I just highlighted it wherever I wanted by doing that by freehanding and drawing in some of this um, detail it also makes the artwork look a little bit more authentic and then I just took my scissors and very carefully trimmed my design. So I cut out my design. And one thing that I did notice is that if you're not going to be applying these right away, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to just have a weight on it until you're ready to use it. Now, in the case of a design that is very intricate and I didn't want to have to cut out all the empty space and my other tray, tray that I'm using this for is a black background. So I just colored in the empty spaces with black so that when I lay it on top of the black surface, it'll look like I cut it all out. And another um, thing that you can do, if you cut out your design before you actually get a chance to trace it, you can also, once it's cut out, put it on a piece of paper and then take your uh, magic marker, your Sharpie permanent marker, and outline it. And what happens when you outline it is that you end up painting around any little white space that perhaps um, you didn't cut. And this just gives it a little bit more of a finished look 
but only to the critical eye. If you do not have a critical eye, you probably won't even notice it. So I cut out all my um, pieces and this is the fun part. Get your pieces, play around with it, look for interesting designs. And it can be anything that you like. Let your imagination run wild. Now I've had this, so that's kind of an interesting, but I think I like creating more of a gathered natural setting. And like I said, you can spend a lot of time doing this. This is the fun part. Um, now, how we are going to adhere these to our tray, once you have your placement in place and you like the layout, I would recommend taking a picture of it so you know where your pieces are going to lay. Because what we are going to do is we're going to add a coat of our um, clear coat to the tray and then we're going to apply these onto the wet clear coat and that will uh, create an adhesion to the tray and then we're going to come back and we're going to add another top coat over the entire thing. So we're just going to work on the inside of the tray and then I'm going to do a clear coat on the entire tray at the end. So for our application, like I said, take your pieces and lay them out the way you like them and I would just simply remove them out the way they are onto your surface so that you can put them back the way you like them if it's something that you're doing that you want it to be perfectly measured then I would recommend just where you've got your pieces just making a little dot connecting to the tray on either side so you can line up those dots with your applique. So let's remove these and now we're going to do our coat, our first coat. I'm going to put them in the way that I had them. But we're going to apply our first coat of the latex clear coat just to the bottom of the tray so that I can actually lay my pieces down. And I'm going to be using, to be using just this little sponge brush to apply my clear coat all over the bottom of my tray. I'm not worrying about the sides or anything else just yet. I'm just doing the bottom of the tray because this is where we are essentially gluing our um, our appliques. So we're going to be applying our clear coat to the bottom of our tray. And we've got about, I think it's about 20 minutes drying time. So you want to work fairly quickly. So I've added a liberal amount. And now I'm going to start positioning my applique. And I'm going to, you'll see how it starts to curl. So I'm just going to take, and you want to do this slowly. So that you're not pulling on it. So now you've got the adhesion below and on top. So you've got it underneath and on top. And this is a good time to feather out and make sure that the design or the applique is perfectly flat and a good way to a good way to feather that out is 
using a cork like so. I've got some bubbles. I just use a cork. It's nice and soft. Don't be too hard. You don't want to tear the paper. But with the cork, even this little legs, you are able to smooth out all the edges and just make sure that there's a really good adhesion but you definitely do not want any air bubbles underneath there. If it's getting a bit dry, add a bit more. And I've still got a little bit of a bubble here. And now we're going to do our grasshopper. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. This is going to dry clear, so you don't have to worry about, about it too much, actually. I'm going to add my flower because I know exactly where that's going. And it will be easier to position. So when you're doing something that's loose like this, you want to just gently lay it down, working from the middle out like this, working your design out. As you're pulling it, you want to use your sponge. I think this is um, the way that you would do decoupage. Need your crinkle in it. Like I've got a little crinkle there. And I can just gently lift. I'm going to add a bit more of my clear. And then I'm going to lay my leaves down. Make sure your cork is clean and that you've used the permanent markers. Otherwise, you may find um, that if your cork's not clean, then you may find that you are going to get some color on there that you don't want. Position it. And this guy's tricky because he's got all these little thin legs. So you want to drop him on, you want to drop him in exactly the way that you're going to want him. And you can even use your fingers. just to get the center started. And then I'm going to take my cork and gently working from the center out, lay all those little legs right into that latex satin finish. And you just want to lay it down as perfectly flat as you can. Don't be too uh, rough on it because these, it's just thin paper. If you pull on it too much, it will may rip. Cover his little legs like so. Obviously make your strokes so that they are nice and they feather out but we're going to be doing more coats on top of this so you'll be able to recover anything so it's looking pretty cool so far so now we're just going to add the little accents and the uh the paint that we the first coat of paint is already dry up here 
So it's drying a little bit faster than I thought. Okay, so let me show you here. You just want to basically apply the clear coat to the general area that you are going to apply your decoration. And let's see, I think that looks pretty right there. Then with your cork, you wanna just smooth it out enough so that everything is adhering while it's wet you just give it a couple of clear coats and actually what's happening is as you're applying the clear coat the design is becoming more vivid and there is definitely the detail shows up even more so it's really, really nice. And then for our last application or applique, and it's this little butterfly. And yeah, I think it looks cute there. The cork is getting gummy as you go along with glue. So just keep a paper towel. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I had to move my butterfly. I wasn't happy with the position. So luckily the paint is still wet. And you just, from the center out, and then apply yeah, once you apply this clear coat, it definitely enhances the color of whatever it is that you're applying. Now, I am going to, I've just noticed that there is, I've got a bit of a bubble here. So in that case, I would probably take a needle and, where'd it go? Oh, I think it was an optical illusion. It was an optical illusion. So now we're gonna let this coat dry. And I think it's looking pretty cool so far as uh, my outdoor tray. And we're going to uh, give this about 10 minutes because this latex paint is drying very quickly. And then I'm going to give it another clear coat just on the bottom. And I'm gonna do two or three coats on the bottom, and then I'm actually gonna remove the handles and I'm gonna clear coat the entire tray two to three times because I want to make it really resistant to the outdoor elements. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be right back. Now that it's dry, you wanna do a clear coat and you're gonna do it right over your entire bottom of the tray to attach my handles to the side. So I've done the same thing as I did before. Before, remember, we had the tape on top. Now we've got the tape on the side because our tray is gonna be held this way. So I've gone ahead and marked my holes perfectly. And I wouldn't normally do this, but just for demonstration purposes. And I'm slowly going to drill right through. Now in this case, I've got these handles that have to be inset. So now I need a bit that is going to be the exact width of this so that these can fit in when they screw on. So I found a bit. I just lined it up with this. And I know that it's the same size of tape and I'm just going to measure how deep that is approximately. And now I know that's how far I'm going to drill in. I'm going back into the same holes 
and I'm going to keep it very straight and line it up perfectly vertical. And this There. So it's been 24 hours, and I actually made two trays to show you two different styles. And our first tray really turned out fantastic. I'm really happy with it. Um, one word of note, when you are printing your botanicals or whatever it is, your clip art, your stock paper uh, will have uh, an impact on the finish. So my stock paper was a little bit thicker, so I had to use 10 coats of the clear varathane in order to get um, a finish that I thought was smooth enough and strong enough to encapsulate the prints. There is still uh, a bit of um, you can feel the edge on it, but it's perfectly sealed and it gave me a really smooth finish. And the nice thing about this, you might be thinking 10, 10 coats, like holy mackerel, but these coats actually dry in 10 to 15 minutes. So I was able to do the 10 coats and I believe for me, this is a better finish than using the top coat, which is the triple thickness. So it is a thicker, which is what I used on my other tray. It is thicker, so I used four coats of the triple on this, but it took three times the amount of time to dry. So I finally, um, the last couple of coats that I applied to this, I used this very thing because I just didn't want to spend the time waiting for it to dry. And also with the extra thick varathane, when you're applying it, I felt that it left the strokes. Even though I was using the sponge brush, there was a texture and that's because it was so thick, it was a little bit more cumbersome to apply and get a smooth finish. So I definitely, um, I like the thin coat, doing the single coat, and I think it will give us a more resistant uh, finish in the end. Also, these are all weather resistant or um, they will repel water. They are not waterproof. So I wouldn't use a tray like this in your pool. The other thing I just wanted to show you is that all these little accents really make a difference. And if you go to your local hardware store, you can find all kinds of corners and bits and handles that you can create all kinds of different things so let your imagination run wild with this tray i added the handle to the end so remember i had to drill through in order to fit the handle and then on the other side the way i finished it is i just got these little they're washers but they're gold washers and I made sure to get some gold um, screws to match the handle. And I also found these little brass corners, which I added. And I think that for this tray, I was kind of inspired by, you know, one of those museum um, drawers that they pull out and there's all a collection of vintage butterflies and insects. That's kind of the feel that I was going for. So I'm really happy with this. This is going to be the tray that I'm going to use in my garden. And I also wanted to mention that although these trays are substantial, they're quite light. So when you're adding extra drinks or um, plates to take out to the patio, you don't have that additional weight. If you want to finish it off even further, which I'm planning on doing, I'm just going to add some felt uh, feet to the four corners and that way it will protect the tray again from uh, either scratching the surface of the table that you're laying the tray on and also protecting the bottom of the tray. If you are purchasing the material to make these trays, if you're buying everything from scratch, it's going to cost you about $40 and I'm 
here in Ontario. Uh, I know the price of wood has gone up, but you might have some scraps and I hope this inspires you to rummage around through the garage. You might have your handles, you might have the hardware uh, ready to go. But initially uh, in this video, I mentioned that I purchased my plywood, which is a quarter of an inch thick and it's 24 by 48. Now the reason I did that was because it gave me three exact trays, 24 by 16, and it was just 30% more of the cost of wood than if I had purchased a 24 by 24 piece of plywood and I would have had to waste some of the wood. So it's up to you. Uh, you may have the scrap wood, you may have all the hardware already sitting in your garage or your um, basement, so go rummaging around. But I think that this is definitely a very rewarding project that is also very functional. And by making the extra trays, I'm able to keep these as um, gifts for the future for any special occasion that may be coming up. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you think you'll make this and you like it, I hope you share it. Enjoy and happy woodworking. Mm -hmm.